Hi guys, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, my name is Ankit Joshi and uh, I've been working with Sitecore from last 5.5 years. Uh, as part of today's uh, uh, session, we basically will be going over uh, accelerated mobile pages uh, with Sitecore. So as part of it, basically well, what we will be covering yeah, so as part of today's session, uh, what we'll be covering is we'll see what is accelerated mobile page is all about and uh, uh, what are the different components of AMP and what benefits we get out of it. Uh, we'll also see how AMP can be integrated within Sitecore uh, and what are the different validation um, uh, ways we have in order to basically in order to validate AMP, what different challenges you may see when you when you think about AM, integrating AMP with your Sitecore or it can be with any other technology as well. So there are a few constraints which comes with uh, AMP. So we'll talk about few challenges and what are the different ways or some workarounds which we can basically use in order to overcome those challenges. Then uh, we'll do a small demo of uh, AMP with Sitecore. Uh, we'll like see how basically we can uh, convert or create an existing um, uh, like Sitecore page to an uh, AMP enabled page, and we'll uh, we'll see some of the differences of it. And then after that, if you have any question, definitely we can go over it. Uh, but just one more thing, I would just want to say. I think I have uh, my friend uh, and colleague uh, Nagin also joined with me here because he has also worked with me on AMP. So I just want to check if Nagin is joined here. Nagin, you are there? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Great. I'm here. Great, great, great. So basically, Nagin has worked with me on one of the AMP project, and uh, uh, he has uh, even he has like more knowledge about AMP. So in case if you have any question, like even he'll he'll be there to answer uh, any of the questions you have on that. So let's start with that. So the first thing, uh, let's start with the introduction of it first. So, uh, AMP is an open source library that provides a straightforward way to create web pages that are compelling, smooth, and load near instantly for users. AMP uh, pages are just web pages that you can link to and control by you. Uh, with a few simple extensions and adherences to, the sele to select restrictions, AMP is an extremely effective tool for reliable performance and an optimal mobile user experience, right? So, Basically, if you see AMP, AMP in simple terms are like web pages that are used and built to to improve the uh, uh, to improve the performance of your mobile. Basically, it is meant to improve the performance of mobile user experience, right? Because you might have seen uh, some of the times like when we try to access a website or or a specific page in mobile, and if you see that a specific page is taking more time than expected to load, uh, you basically lose your interest and navigate to a different site or a competitor website, right? So that is an expected scenario, which even like I have seen several times when I try to access any any web page, and if, if it takes more time to load, then I definitely lose interest on that, and I try to find other alternatives to that. So that is one of the problems which we see these days, because everything is like, because everything is mobile, no one is actually uh, like no one is more lying on the desktop. Every everything is mobile, right? So uh, Google is actually trying to solve the same issue because th this AMP is an initiative by Google only, which was started on back February 2016. So that is one of the initiative Google is going to improve the uh, to improve the experience of mobile users. So. Uh, why exactly AMP is required, right? Because let's say if, if a page is taking more time than expected to load, right, and your experience is not as, as uh, you're expecting, then you will definitely end up with some high bounce rate, right? As in business and as in brand, if you if you're seeing high bounce rate, your application, you won't meet the KPIs. That is one of the thing uh, that is very critical to any, any business. You want one if you don't meet the KPIs, you won't get the the ROI which you are basically expecting there, right? So in order to meet the KPIs and in order to get the return of investment, the amount of money you are putting into your brand and business, it is very, it is very important that you basically give uh, your users a, a good user experience. So AMP is all about uh, basically giving a user a better user experience, more specifically from a mobile point of view. It's not like that. AMP is something which you can use only for mobile. The AMP is basically a technology which can be used even in your desktop um, as well, but it is it is more focused on mobile. That is what I can say as of now. But uh, definitely, if you want to use AMP for your uh, desktop also, definitely you can use it. So uh, third point is AMP. So when we when we talk about AMP, uh, so this AMP HTML is one of the components of uh, AMP. Basically, uh, you will see in, in the next slide we have uh, three different components of AMP. So 
AMP HTML is one of the component which is basically a subset of HTML for for basically authoring a few of like some content pages like news and articles and if you follow some uh, if you follow uh, a guidelines and uh, the the restriction which has pro uh, like which is provided by AMP basically we can we can be uh, we can meet the baseline performance characteristics and all that uh, second Okay, so when we talk about the components, so these are the three different components which we see when we talk about AMP. So AMP HTML is the first of uh, first component. Then we have JS, which is specific to AMP, and then uh, the third one is Google AMP Cache. So the first thing is AMP HTML. As in the previous slide, you have seen it is basically AMP HTML is also uh, like uh, it's a subset of the, it's a, it's basically a subset of HTML. When you can basically you can use the same same uh, same tags which is provided by HTML, but it uh, it uh, it also has added some more text to it. Right, uh, definitely improve the performance only. So, uh, and definitely it comes with some restrictions as well. We will see what are those restrictions. Uh, then AMP JS is uh, so when we talk about JS, uh, when we talk about AMP uh, specifically, JS is a very important as playing a very critical role there because uh, in the AMP in in AMP basically you cannot use a custom um, JavaScript, right? So that is strictly not allowed. You cannot use any custom JavaScript and you cannot basically refer any any third-party plugins out there. Right, because the reason uh, you cannot use um, any third-party plugins or custom JS because anything which has potential to to hamper the page load performance, right? Anything which you see that you know, that can that can be an issue for your page load performance. AMP is basically trying to keep all those things out of your page. So, custom JavaScript and loading any third-party plugin is is has potential to to hamper uh, the uh, the perf the uh, the load of your page and the performance of your page. So that is one of the primary reason you uh, custom JS is primarily not allowed natively. Yeah, but there are some workarounds um, available in order to use custom JavaScript in your AMP page. But um, it's not like that. You can out of the box you can just use any custom JavaScript uh, in your page because it again depends on the requirement it again depends on the level of customization you want to do uh, with the with the JS in your AMP page if the level of customization is is uh, like small then to some extent you can definitely use it uh, in your page but if you see that the level of customization and uh, the type of customization which you're trying to do <clears throat> by using custom JavaScript in your AMP page if that explicitly doesn't support AMP then you cannot use it so uh, the way okay we'll talk about the workarounds how basically we can use custom uh, JavaScript and plugins in your AMP page so this is also uh, this is one of the reason uh, this is one of the reason and one of the uh, challenge which we see when we were ex uh, when we were actually implementing AMP page and we had some discussion with with Google team also and then they came up with a recommendation that this is how you, you guys should be doing it and we were actually aligned with the recommendation by Google also but they they filtered it more precisely so I will be sharing those updates uh, those details also with you. Um, third thing is basically the, the the reason for not having JS is to basically improve the performance of your page. Nothing, nothing more, more than that. Third component of uh, AMP is Google, uh, is the Google AMP cache. So Google AMP cache is is basically it's a cache of validated AMP documents published on the web, right? So whenever Google finds a valid AMP document, right, it basically cache in uh, cache in the Google AMP cache in the CDN, and then any further request from there for that. AMP page will be served directly from the AMP cache, right? So, um, but but again, the Google AMP cache is something which will be used only when you are going for an organic search, right? If you are, when we talk about, because there can be multiple uh, multiple ways of uh, like how you are actually implementing your AMP in your specifically into Sitecore application. Uh, because AMP is, as I mentioned, like AMP is more focused on mobile. So, uh, if I take a very simple example, if we have a static HTML, uh, static AMP page, and that is all validated fine, Google has cached that page in uh, in the Google cache, and then whenever, as an end user, I'm trying to search for that particular article in Google, that particular article will come up first in the in the search list. So that's how because why from where exactly we are getting that item in the Google search, it is actually coming from the Google cache, but uh, take one more example let's say uh, if you are trying to access one page in your desktop right so okay uh, i'm i think i'll make it more complex if i talk more about it here but there are different ways uh, so google cache google amp cache is something like uh, uh, the valid amp documents will be stored in the cdn of google and then any search uh, out of 
uh, like if you try to search from as in from an organic search perspective you'll get uh, the results from google cache directly so that will have a very good uh, uh, page load for you okay so benefits uh, so before we actually go into how uh, amp can be use in your site code there are a few benefits which i want to talk about here so reduce bounce rate and keep audience engaged are, are a couple of benefits which go simultaneously because if um, as long as you are giving your users um, an instance experience right as as soon as the user is uh, like typing a url and it immediately it is loading and you are you are helping them to reduce you're helping your brand and and your business reduce the bounce rate it, uh, you are basically keeping your audience engaged, right? And if your audience is engaged with your um, with your application and with your band, definitely the chance of the the, the return on investment is definitely going to be um, going to increase. Uh, performance is again uh, that is the main reason. That is the main reason behind like having this amp in place. So definitely it gives uh, uh, in, like increase in your performance, page load time, and then ranking is something as I told. Like once uh, once Google finds a val valid amp uh, document in the cache, and as an end user, if you try to search for uh, search for a specific keyword which which has an amp document or, like which has which is related to an amp page definitely those items will come first and then your non amp page will come first so that's how the ranking will be done in in google search results as well so these are the few benefits which comes out like when we when we talk about uh, amp and it is uh, directly or indirectly it, uh, can be managed with your site code as well okay so how AMP can be uh, integrated with Sitecore, right? Because AMP is not something like it is. It can be just integrated with, with Sitecore. It can be. It's just an HTML which can which can be used in any any kind of platform. So we are just trying to see how it can be leveraged within Sitecore. So uh, uh, so these are the very so uh, before we actually talk about uh, the steps that are required for integration there are this is just one way of doing it there are there can be like different ways we can uh, uh, integrate amp inside core and again it completely depends on the the business requirement and business use case how exactly you want to go for it but yes this is one way of doing it so if you want to have amp um, uh, with your site code so the first step would be uh, you have to you basically have to create a different layout altogether so you are we basically we are proposing to create a different layout so that you can actually maintain two different versions of your page let's say we we talk about home page because home page is uh, is ideally as uh, uh, ideally the first priority to basically when you're trying to convert your pages to AMP so all your landing pages your search page and your home pages is kind of priority items for them so uh, in case if you're trying to convert your existing home page to to AMP enabled was uh, to AMP enabled page what you have to do is you already have a default layout in site code right so but in this case when you try to convert it to AMP uh, the first approach could be you can get a different layout of it so the reason you want to create a different layout so that you can actually differentiate your your desktop version and your mobile version so that is in uh, that's the reason basically you want to have a different layout created for it so uh, we need to create a specific layout for the pages which needs to support amp example product detail and article so it can be anything like you can create a one layout which can support uh, your different types of page right so that's how you can do uh, that that is that is the first step here specifically then second step is <coughs> uh, you need to create a different device for it right so because um, by default we have a default device here where like you you set the page presentation of it it can be home or uh, like it can be like uh, your um, product landing page it can be any landing page right but what happens is if you want to create a different version of your or if you want to create an amp enabled version of your existing page it make more sense if you create a different device why it make more sense to create a different device because that way um, so when we create a different device then there also we have different option either you can basically make use of user browser agent you can make use of query string parameter and then there are different ways to do it but in this case if we if we basically create a different device for it, it it is basically easy for us to maintain two different versions of it and it is easy for us to maintain both the versions like desktop and mobile so 
uh, the, this is the second step like for AMP specific pages we can create a different um, a device only for pages which are designed and focused on AMP. It can be uh, article, um, uh, this way we can keep AMP and non-AMP pages and configuration separate. So that is um, the whole reason of having a different layout and different device created uh, completely for AMP. And the third step would be once we have the device and uh, layout created, uh, the third step would be to basically add the meta text to link your uh, AMP and non-AMP page. So in, let's say if you're talking about linking your, uh, we already have a home page, right? Non, which is a non-AMP page, and you're trying to convert this non-AMP home page to AMP home page, then we need to specify the meta text and uh, canonical URL basically to uh, to refer that okay, you know that this non-AMP page has equivalent AMP page, right? So that's how uh, that's how basically we make we uh, <coughs> we allow Google to basically make this make that page discoverable. Um, there are few, so we'll see all, all these things, how we can do it, but before that, just want to go over some of the recommendations. Uh, subset, of actual, subset of actual page, so let's say if you're talking about your product landing page or your home page, which has a whole list of complex modules, it is recommended that you, even though if you want to create an AMP version of it, that's a really good idea to go for an AMP because what we have seen um, as part of one of the implementation that when we when we have uh, created an AMP version of an existing page, we have seen a performance improvement of around 37 uh, percent. Uh, 37, I'm not wrong, uh, I'm not sure about the percent, but it was like around 35 to 40 percent. We have increased, we have seen the uh, improvement there so it is a good idea to basically go for an AMP version of it but it is also at the same time it is also important to basically keep uh, the restriction and constraint that comes with AMP so that on the line you don't face those issues right because you don't you don't want to commit something to client and then when you exactly like when you start working on it you find out that this is something which is um, which, this is not feasible from the AMP perspective so it is very important that you keep those restriction and constraints from AMP in mind before we uh, do it. Uh, so as AMP doesn't support the custom plugins and JS, AMP version of any specific page should be a subset of actual page. So absolutely you, do, you don't want to convert uh, all the, let's say if you're in home page, you have 10 different components. You don't want to convert all those 10 components to AMP. Even though if you want to convert those 10 different components to AMP, you don't want to configure all those com 10 different components to, uh, to an AMP page. Right, and should include lightweight version of the model that has been used in the actual version of the page because there there are versions in your because maybe you are uh, uh, the actual non M version in your uh, the non M model which you are using in your home page that is that has complex in, like that are complex in nature that are using some third party plugins and all that stuff so you can still use the same module but you basically have to refactor it somehow to adjust in M why the refactoration is required because we have few other restriction in app so we'll we'll talk about those restrictions as well because we have seen those things that's why we just want to share all those details with you so that you in case if you want to do um, a kind of poc with that and uh, so that you have all those things in your mind so that you don't have to uh, deal with that again and again so reader focused amp should be more content focused right so amp is something which which you will so when you start uh, looking for AMP in uh, in your articles, most of the places you will basically find it is more content focused. When you when we say content focused means you should basically uh, you should basically try to convey only only that set of information to your end user that is that is the core of that page, right? So let's say if you're talking about a product landing page, you basically has to, you basically have to extract the core of that product landing page and just try to come up with a, a, a decent module which you can place in your AMP enabled version of your product landing page. You don't want to you don't want to basically uh, configure all those complex modules complex uh, modules in your non AMP on your AMP version because ultimately it is going to affect your because the whole idea of going with AMP is we want to have a performance improvement there. If you are, if uh, somehow if you are trying to uh, convert all non-AMP modules to AMP modules and then ultimately you're ending up with no performance improvement, then it's as good as you don't convert your page to AMP. The whole idea is you want to have improve your performance so and you convey what is exactly needed for that page to convert your end user. So those type of things only you should put as part of your page. So that's the reason it says it should be more content focused rather than the group of com group of complex modules. It should include modules that focus on the content that we wanted to convert to the end user. So that should be the core of your uh, of your page, AMP page. And to be very simple, just keep it simple. That is the first thing. Okay, so before we go into uh, further like how basically we can do it about the validation, I just want to show you how we can do 
uh, all this configuration in your site code. So let me open. Okay, so I have all these things set up already for you, so that we don't want to get into all these things. But I just can still show you. Uh, this these are the pages. Come on. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> uh, let me. Okay, so let me just load this page. So this is the home page. We just have a simple header. We have a footer here, and then we have a couple of modules here. Uh, if you want to see uh, the structure inside code, I can just show you. So we have home here, presentation details, uh, and if you go to the default layout, right? So the default layout is something which will be rendered in your uh, basically if you access this page from your mobile view or from your from your desktop uh, view this this is the word this is the uh, default layout which is going to render which has header and footer and a small component free rt component added to it so this is what uh, your end users will see when when they actually access uh, try to access this home page this is the view basically they are going to see right uh, how about if you want to convert the same existing home page to an amp enabled page so uh, this is approach one. We'll we'll also talk about a different approach one uh, about after this. So before that, what exactly we have to do is we have to go to system. Uh, so because that is what we actually talked about here. Uh, let me go here. We are talking about uh, creating a different device here. So what uh, I have done here is uh, so if I go to layout devices and then we have what I've done is I've just created a different device called amp here right and then on the query string I've just added a amp equals to true so any like if I try to access if I try to set this particular de uh, device uh, to my uh, like to any of the existing page and try to access that page with amp uh, is set to true query string then my amp page should load there right so that's how we have done it uh, if I go to home again presentation details and then if I just scroll down, you can see we have another device layout added here, that is AMP. And uh, the presentation, if you compare the presentation of the normal uh, default layout and the and uh, AMP enabled layout is, see here you see we have a standard layout added, here we have AMP standard layout added, then here we have header, RT and footer, and here also we have AMP equivalent, diff equivalent component basically. So we have header, we have RT, and we have footer. In case if you want to add uh, a different component to a desktop, maybe if you want to do, if you want to add the same component for your uh, mobile device, then uh, basically you can add that component here, right? So, but at the moment, uh, what I have done is I have the same whatever components I have as part of my desktop, the same set of components I have replicated for my M device. So if I want to access Amp here, uh, it is straightforward. Like we can just use it. Uh, amp is set to true. So this amp set to true is basically rendering the presentation from my amp layout here, amp device layout, right? So this is how it goes. And then um, the third step would be like you basically have to use some uh, uh, basically device detection rules you have to add so that. Uh, once you add those device detection rule, you can basically um, set out, you know, that if the request is coming from a mobile device, then you can you can basically make your AMP layout as your standard, uh, as your default layout there. You don't have to basically uh, rely on the default, but based on the device detection rule, you can actually set this AMP as your uh, device layout when you when you're accessing it from mobile breakpoint. So that. Uh, uh, that device detection I haven't covered as part of my PBT uh, and not even in the scope, but that's how actually we have to go for it. Now, another thing which I just want to explain here is uh, once you have, once you create your default and AMP layout, right? Uh, there are certain things which we basically have to um, uh, validate, right? Because AMP validation is something. Okay, uh, one more thing. So before we talk about validation, just want to um, explain you once again that this is one approach when like we can uh, we can actually uh, configure an AMP page for your 
for your existing non m page so that this is one way of doing it right now uh, the thing which i see in this particular approach is if you want to let's say as part of your home page so if i open if i take this component out from here as of now what i have done i have added just one component here which is free uh, free rt component i guess right so now down the line i want to add couple of more components to my uh to my home page right and we we also have an uh, equal um, uh, if i'm adding those components into my presentation here right it it will be on to content author that they have to add the equivalent components to amp layout also right so uh, it's not like that because i'm not talking about device detection let's assume that we have the device detection in place when like if if the request is coming from your mobile device it uh, it really is basically takes the amp presentation into consideration and it will load it but it also uh, there is one additional responsibility we are putting into content authors wherein like we are we are expecting them to uh, to add the same component which they are adding in your uh to your, to the default desktop layout default layout here right provided if they want to add the same if they want to show their user the same component in their mobile view also if if their if their expectation is that they can have a different view altogether for their for their desktop and for their mobile user then we are all, all fine but if their expectation is that okay you know that if they are adding a new component uh to their desktop layout they they want the same component for their amp layout also then that is into like content author they have to basically manually add it here so that is an extra um like extra overhead we which we add uh, into uh, content authors so how to overcome to this problem right so this is, we we have a problem here right so the problem basically from an end user perspective this is not a problem but from the maintenance perspective and from the content author perspective we see a problem here from the content author perspective what problem we see here is whatever component they add here they basically have to add the same component for their amp layout also means that this particular layout it will be rendered for their mobile and this layout will be uh, rendered to the desktop so we are adding an extra overhead to content author what extra overhead we are adding from development perspective what extra overhead we are adding is we have to basically let's say if they want to create a new component right so if they add a new component for the desktop we also need to create an equivalent component for our mobile also right so that is um, again one extra thing which we have to do another extra thing what we are doing here is we are actually duplicating our files here we are duplicating our views here right everything we are duplicating because we want to maintain both amp and non amp at the same time so that is extra overhead which we are adding into a development perspective from development perspective also that if if there is a new component added here you want to add that same rendering for your amp as well plus views controllers and everything will be there so this is the problem which we see from the development perspective and the problem on content author perspective also so how we can solve that problem initially we 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 actually use the same approach right this particular approach only we have used and uh, it was all working fine uh, we actually trained our content authors also that you know that if they want to add something to their uh, mobile layout they can make use of uh, they can, they just have to configure it here and all those things but we also had few discussion with google uh, google uh, team that you know how basically best we can organize it because most of the places if you see uh, you will find that you know um, uh, when when you basically start looking amp and site core you will you will see most of the places they will talk about that we have to basically uh, duplicate our first duplicate views controllers and all renderings and all those things but when we had a discussion with google like he actually uh, proposed that unless and until uh let's say we we are talking about a site called local.amp and if you don't have a mobile specific version of it when i say mobile specific version means if you don't have like amp.local.amp something like that we don't have to basically go for this type of setup means we are like we are talking about uh, an amp version and a non amp version right so we don't have to specifically go for this type of version what we can instead do is if you don't have a very specific mobile version and we just our site is just responsive what we can do we can still go for one version means the same version basically will be used for your mobile user and the same version will be used for your desktop user so that's how it goes so but if you are taking that decision that the same temp uh, the the same version and the same uh, presentation will be used for your for both of your uh, uh, for both breakpoints then you, you basically have to make an um, make a decision that okay no what different components you want to put to your page right because not not everything can come to your page right because you want to have a very 
crazy functionality for your users on your desktop but the same functionality if it supports AMP that's well and good but if that feature is uh, uh, if AMP doesn't support that feature then it's a problem for uh, for implementation so that decision and that uh, um, exercise you guys have to do basically that's kind of homework we have to do before we uh, see like what different components can be added as part of a specific page so once you have a list finalized list that you know that these are the components which can be added then what you can do you can basically completely get rid of this particular feature here you you no more need this separate device layout here so the reason we created this device uh, default device layout called a um, uh, custom device layout called AMP because that time we had two different versions of it we have header we have AMP header we have RT RF, RT and and like that but if you think that you don't need two different versions you can basically get rid of this one you you don't need this one what you will do is in the default layout only you will just replace your AMP so whatever uh, layout you see here standard layout that will be replaced with AMP standard layout uh, and all your specific renderings will be replaced in your directly in default layout okay so because as I mentioned initially like AMP is more focused for mobile but nowhere it's mentioned that you cannot use it for your desktop you can still use it for your desktop as well right it, it is very well written in um, in the AMP uh, site as well ampproject.com there you can see it is meant for it is more focused for your mobile user but it can be used for your desktop so basically we are leveraging that part only and then basically we made some changes and we moved we get rid of uh, this particular component and move everything from your standard uh, from your default uh, means uh, the custom AMP layout to default layout yeah. so that is another way of implementation so you don't but what I'm showing here you here is the first like one way of implementation you can actually create your different views here fine so uh, uh, so once we have uh, so but as of now I'll just assume we have two different layouts here so once we have these two different types of layout and we have device detection rules in place which basically takes care of uh, uh, showing the right uh, uh, view uh, for your different uh, breakpoints the next step which we have to do is we basically have to start validating the page because that is that is uh, okay in this case also if I just want to show you uh, what I have done is on the rendering section if I go to uh, project and then show, okay no not this one if I go to layouts and if I go to projects and box see I have this standard layout here right so this is actually meant for your desktop user and then I created a specific AMP standard layout which is meant for your uh, mobile users and then um, if I go from on the rendering perspective uh, let me go to feature so we have an RT component which was which was meant for your desktop user then we actually created another component for AMP because why actually we created this AMP I will come to that because it's not like that you always need to have two two different features uh, there are certain scenarios when like you have to create different rendings for it why we need to create those different rendings um, I'll, I'll explain you in, in a while then uh, global also you can see we have footer and we have equivalent uh, component there so that's how that is one way of doing it and it works uh, as expected no issues out there uh, okay so once you have all these things in place uh, your this is your home page you load it and then if I go to AMP enable page let me just show it okay now you can clearly see the difference here this is my home page this is my non AMP home page which has two components uh, added here and this is my non AMP uh, sorry AMP version which has only one component added so this is kind of um, extra overhead for content author they have to basically make sure everything is in sync between your their desktop and mobile okay so what so once all these things in place what is the next step so next step is if I go to the view source right of your non M page because we, here basically we are talking about the same page it, because the item is same view is different uh, that's fine but we are talking about two different views for our end users our end our mobile user will see this view and our desktop user will see this view so when we're, when we're talking about this view what we have to do we have to basically let Google know that for this non M version there is an equivalent M version available because once Google knows that an equivalent AMP version is available then only Google will basically validate that page and add that page into the Google cache library so how basically Google will come to know that for this page an equivalent AMP is available so that setting we have to do as part of your uh, uh, mm -hmm.
yes so we have a link tag um, and then here we have added amp html right and then in the amp html we basically have to give a url of your equivalent amp page so if this page is your uh, home page so what is the url equivalent url of your home page for amp so it is in this case as we are using the uh, uh, the query string we can just set amp equals to true right so this is the equivalent amp url for your home page and now so this is what we have to set for your non amp page the same setting we have to do for your amp page also so this is our amp page and if you do the view source here you will see that uh, yeah we have a canonical url here which is set to the the, the non non amp version so this is what uh, these are the two settings which we have to do on the layout level for your AMP and non-AMP page. Basically, let Google know about it that for this page, an equivalent non-AMP version is available so that it can be added to the Google cache and in Syrian and can access it from there. So these are the two settings which are required. Uh, another thing is, uh, so once you add these two settings, you you also have to make sure uh, because AMP comes with a validation, right? Because if unless and until your page is not validated, not am validated. You cannot Google. Basically, we cannot push this page, or we cannot submit. We cannot submit this page to Google Cache, right? And if you don't, if if you're not able to, if the page is not valid AMP page, then this page will not come in your organic search also in your Google. So let's say if if uh, there is there is an um, there is an application for there is a site for Mantra, and there are certain product category pages which they have added, and if that particular page is not a valid AMP, and if you try to search for a specific keyword out there, you will not find that particular AMP page in your Google search result, basically in your organic search result. And if you if you're not getting that organic search result, then basically that is something uh, that is something which we have to fix because the whole idea is you have to have a valid AMP page so that it can come as part of organic search results there. And when, once it comes as, as an organic search result, you will basically see a batch, uh, a batch, a lightning badge you will see in uh, in your Google search results. I can show you uh, how it looks. Uh, so once your page is valid, it can be successfully pushed to Google Cache, and then from there, for any organic search, it can be uh, it can be loaded to your search results page. So that's how it loads. And then it, if we, once it lo if once it comes to once the page comes from uh, Google Cache, you just click on it, and it just serves like anything. It, it's very fast. Okay. Okay. So talking about the uh, the validation, right? So we have few validations here. Uh, in, in this case, if I try to validate this particular page, anyways, we have an extension uh, extension also here. So in this case, you can see this. So this is the badge which basically you see uh, in your Google search results as, a, as an organic search result thing, uh, which means this page is a valid AMP page. If this page is not a valid AMP page, you will see some few errors here. So that is one way of validating it. Else, uh, there is a, um, a development equal set to one. Basically, what this does is, if you just append development equals to one, you will come to know if your page is valid or not. Here you can see it it gives AMP validation successful. It means this particular page is a valid AMP page. Now, let's say if how we see or how we fix uh, a validation issue, right? So before that, let me just uh, show you one more thing. Uh, okay, so I'll just show you how it looks when we get an error. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to call out, okay, and then I'll just remove this one. Okay, it should be fine. I'm just making it as a well non M page now, okay, and rest everything should be fine. And if I load this page, okay, fine. Okay, now we see AM validation had errors. So which means this page cannot be pushed to Google now. So we have to fix this error and here, this, so this is one way of validating your page. And another way, if you have this extension added to your Chrome, you can see that error uh, here as well. No, maybe it is not coming. And maybe it's because of the, this one. See, yeah, we can see it here, right? So the image, uh, the tag image may only appear as a descendant of the tag no script. Did you mean AMP image? So that's a validation error which we have to fix. And once this, all these things are fixed, then you can basically push it to Google. Uh, so let me just refresh it. Fine. 
okay coming back to the presentation here so these are validation which we are talking uh, so uh, there are several ways uh, available to validate an AMP document they will produce an exact same result so whichever suits, uh, suits you you can make use of it so developer, uh, browser developer console is one way of to validate your AMP page so I just show you you just need to append hash element is set to 1 to the uh, to the URL and then basically you you, uh, you get to know what different you, uh, errors you have as part of your AMP page there is a web interface as well uh, this, that is part of AMP project.org you can just uh, uh, give the you uh, give the URL of your valid AMP page, and it will basically pass that page and see get uh, show you the result in pass or fail if it is valid or non. And then uh, from this URL also search your Google.com test AMP. Also, you can basically validate if it is a valid AMP or not. So there are different ways to validate it, and this is very very important activity. And what I would say. When, when, uh, let's say if you have, in, you have uh, if you have integrated your uh, AMP page to any of the existing components in your site code, and when your content authors are doing some activities, content activity adding some component, it is very much required. Basically, we have to educate them, train them that they they have to basically test the uh, test the validation because if this doesn't works, if this doesn't works, which the AMP validation is failing. It means you cannot add this page to Google, and if it is not to Google, it is not coming. It is not going to come to your search results page. So that is very much important activity which we have to always train to content authors. So whenever you get the chance, you create your documents, let your content authors know about it, that how critical it is, and for their business. Okay. Now coming to challenges. Uh, uh, this is what uh, the interesting section. So some of the challenges that you may see with AMP for for integration specifically in site code. So the first thing is uh, custom JS and third party JS plugins are absolutely absolutely not uh, allowed. There is no way you can uh, write your custom JavaScript and third party plugin because the the reason is very um, uh, obvious because any any uh, anything which can basically uh, hampers the uh, the page load performance or it can affect the page load of your uh, site it basically uh, AMP is taking those things um, out from the page but there are ways then there are there are workarounds so we will come to that another thing is CSS weight so that is a very important thing which you have to always think about it when we are talking when you are trying to convert your uh, non AMP page to an AMP page because we have a restriction of that that maximum 50 KB only can be allowed as part of your AMP page if it goes if your CSS size goes beyond 50 KB it basically starts throwing an AMP validator error and again you have to fix it if you don't fix it it is not a valid AMP and it, it cannot become as part of your organic service result. So uh, you have to fix your CSS weight, you have to write your CSS um, uh, uh, very smartly so that it uh, it basically um, does everything and then uh, you can reduce it also and then simplified version of your page. So simplified version of your page by this what I'm what I'm trying to say is um, your your desktop version looks like like it has uh, like 20 different components and like every like you have too much of uh, third party integration and all those things right uh, but when when we talk about converting that page to amp maybe we will end up adding only five components right so uh, the expectation maybe that is something which we always have to check with our business team that we always have to make them aware that okay no they cannot expect the same thing of what they're seeing as of now yes it, it it is always possible if if the current version is is decent enough to be converted back to AMP, but if they are if they are if the current version is crazy enough then yes definitely your your current uh, AMP version is going to be simplified of it so that is a, these are three things which you all and maybe um, maybe if your business team will be okay but you just have to let them know about it like uh, the AMP will be is going to be simplified so the so what I want to discuss here is custom JSON third-party plugin. So as I told, like even we uh, we have seen this challenge, and uh, the, because uh, when we were implementing for this one of for one of the project, and we had few uh, custom JavaScripts, and uh, but there is no way for us to um, basically um, integrate this as part of non as part of AMP page. But that is that is something which was really needed uh, by the business because business absolutely need those these those things right so what we did uh, we again did some research and then again we reached out to um, to Google 
um, and what basically they recommend is uh, they they recommended that anyways we we were also on the same line but we were we were seeing okay you know, maybe they have some different option because it is still growing right amp is still growing so we were just thinking maybe there are a few things which has already been uh, 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 like they have already they have already handled this thing but it's not been made public so we reached out to them and then they also came up with the same same approach which we were thinking uh, internally that they we can make use of amp i frame so amp i frame is basically a component uh wherein like you can actually use custom javascript right so you uh <clears throat> so you can use those custom javascript as part of your amp i frame but again it comes with some constraint there constraints there that if you're using amp i frame then it has to be the source what you're trying to access there has to be a valid https right so those type of restriction it comes with but yes if if you are if there is no way for you to basically um, go away with uh, with that custom javascript requirement you can make use of i amp i frame but there also uh, in if i give my example uh, in our case what we did uh, we we had like two different components which were lying on two different types of custom javascript plugin so we we were able to resolve for for one of the module uh, using amp i frame but for for one of the module even with amp i frame also that that uh, that didn't work so that all that is also something which is very important and you if you know those things as early as possible it is it is basically better to let your business um, and your team know about it that okay know that even with the uh, this option uh, the, the specific implementation is not available then we again we discuss the same thing with google and then they also share okay know that this is something which is not feasible then we have to do something custom out of it so that's how actually it concluded so what i'm trying to say is even with there is a way to to use custom javascript and custom javascript plugins with amp i frame but again that depends on the level of complexity level of customization you have as part of your plugin there are there can be situation where your i frame doesn't support it so that is something which uh, which you always have to keep in mind when you think about converting your non amp page to amp page that what is the level of um, custom javascript that is being used there right uh, another challenge which we um, which we have seen as part of css is like it always goes beyond 50 kb because we had like a fairly large amount of uh, modules added to that so again somehow this we managed like we trained our content authors and in a way like okay you know that this is kind of restriction and then there we actually gave them some recommendation around it so we were fine with that <laughs> If you see this screenshot, it says the author style sheet space when a tag amp style amp custom is too long. We saw this many bytes. Where is the limit? Is this byte right? So it should not go beyond 50 KB. One way, basically, to uh, uh, to solve this uh, CSS size issue is you can you can uh, minify your CSS. Right, and then you can have some. Uh, so that is that is basically the uh, one way. Even if you find, you can see the this particular recommendation in um, AMP site as well. So that is something which really helped us uh, because we are also facing the same similar issue. And then there is another thing which uh, we can try when we see this type of error. Even though the simplified version is not helping us out, is maybe you can uh, based on uh, instead of uh, instead of load, loading your uh, page with all the CSS which is required for your module. You just load load the CSS which is needed by your module. Right? It's not like that. You don't need to load everything. Whatever is needed, you just go for it, and then you should be fine. I feel. So that is another way you can think about it. When you think even the minified version is not helping you out, and then you're still getting this error. So uh, that is another way you can um, you can overcome the problem of CSS weight. And then simplified version of your page is something which you always have to keep in mind because this is really important. Um, you you I would say you don't think about making your page over complicated because AMP is good, but uh, we basically have to be aligned with what AMP provides. AMP we have to be basically aligned with the guidelines which has provided by amp and then if you're adding all those modules and if it is ultimately going to affect the performance of your page then uh, whatever time energy and money you are spending for all this integration if that is not uh, paying you back then it's not worth for it right so that's what i'm saying you you go for amp but try to make your page simple so that it it serves what it is meant for so that is really important thing uh, which you always have to keep in mind uh, so there are the few examples which you can see. Uh, there are Mantra. They have already started working on in uh, working on AMP. So if you search for uh, a keyword UV can in especially in mobile 
online mobile not specific online mobile then only you will come to know that uh, how the amp page looks so you will see some of the some of the search results which which will have that lightning symbol on that and if you just click on that uh, uh, result item it just loads your page instantaneously so um, that is one example and then in eBay also has started working on it and I have seen some use cases from uh, from Mentra and from eBay both even though they have written separate blogs on like how, how was their journey of this uh, implementation and it is really um, helpful even though you can also take a look if you have some time whenever you basically think about uh, AMP in your site core so in this uh, in this case if you search for a keyword camera drones for eBay you will find uh, non AMP version uh, sorry, you will find an AMP version and if you click on that non-AMP version, it basically redirects to uh, the non-AMP version, which is absolutely fine because ultimately the goal of AMP is to reduce the bounce rate, which means as, as soon as possible you can load your page. It is fine if AMP has actually served its purpose. So from there, once you are into AMP page, and uh, from there, if you want to redirect to some other page, that is that is absolutely fine. You can just redirect to AMP page, or you can redirect to a non-AMP page also. So that is absolutely fine. You don't have to worry about more on that. But as soon as you are you are solving the issue of the page bounce, because that is one of the reason uh, uh, Google is running this initiative. So you should be fine. Mm, and another thing, yeah. So these are some of the differences you, which you can uh, use. Uh, like it has everything you can find in under ampproject.org, and this is a quick start. And there is one more stack. Of, um, this article, basically, this is um, this is the article which I have used, uh, basically, which we have used as a reference when we started integrating AMP with Sitecore, and this is really helpful. Uh, but this is what we started initially, but now actually we are into a different um, approach. So, but that is. A very good starting point for anyone who is trying to uh, check for AMP here. And <clears throat> the last is even I have written like step by step uh, uh, blog like how basically they can do the integration with their AMP. So if anyone is interested on that, you can go to my blog and then look for this article and it will basically give start, uh, step by step instruction how to do that. And yeah, if you have any questions, so um, what I would say, like uh, definitely you can take this as an initiative, and even if you are seeing, if you are seeing uh, like the you, some of your application has some performance issues, and uh, you are trying is looking for something innovative, definitely you go for it. At least do it as kind of POC, and propose it to your team, and see how it goes. So definitely it is going to going to add value uh, to your business and brand. That's what I can say. Any questions? All right, to slide, we don't have any questions right now. Okay. So if there's, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to Ankit. Uh, he's shared all his contact information as well. You can find him on Twitter and LinkedIn, wherever. Uh, so thanks so much, Ankit. Yep, there's Ankit's Thank information again. Thank you, Ankit, and thanks for attending. Uh, we'll announce our next session shortly, and we'll be sharing the uh, recording of this. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Take care.